Hi everyone, here's the Bookamist once again, and today I'm reviewing Lovecraft Country by Matt Ruff, which is an excellent take on one of the 20th century's best writers, if you ask me, and on one of his most problematic sides. These are strange times to be a Lovecraft scholar or even just a dedicated fan of his fiction, because on the one hand, Lovecraft today is more famous and more recognized than ever, both on an academic level and on a popular level. Uh, the popularity of Lovecraft's fiction and Lovecraftian horror is boundless in the world of board games, comic books, uh, fan fiction and genre fiction, literary fiction in the world of whatever, movies, whatever, he is more popular than ever. It's so popular that the essence of his fiction has been inevitably diluted in most of these products, so much that Lovecraft nowadays is mostly tentacles, and very there, there's not too much of the essence of his fiction, but that's good too, because Number one, it's an inevitable process, and number two, lots of people, lots of serious scholars tend to forget that tentacles are a, like, a, like a key part of Love, Lovecraft, actually. They're, they're there. At the same time, lots of people, for completely understandable reasons, do not share this enthusiasm and tend to focus on the war sides, on the actual horrors of Lovecraft as a person, as a human being, and on the worst sides of his view on the world. And for instance, yesterday the World Fantasy Award was given to novels and short stories and such in the um, in the fields of horror and fantasy slash science fiction, and for the first time in the award's history, the actual statue, the actual award, was not a bust, actually a character of ours truly, because, um, I, well, this followed a controversy in which some writers believed that it was wrong to use the statue and the image of a racist as a, an award in such categories, in these categories. What do I think? I think that the last refuge of intolerance is not tolerating the intolerant. That's not me, by the way, it's George Eliot, but I am so not going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about Lovecraft Country, which problematizes this side of Lovecraft by being very much a Lovecraftian pastiche, this is a Lovecraftian novel, Lovecraftian horror, to, like, to the extreme, but its main characters, the main characters in this book are an extended African-American family living in the America of the 1950s, of, in the America of the Jim Crow laws. On the cover of the book, which, by the way, as an object is fucking amazing, is simply a, a, an awesome piece of art, there's this pretend sticker saying, saying America's demons exposed, and of course, as you probably have already mentioned, the book plays a lot with this parallel between the actual demons and wizards of Lovecraftian horror and the very recognizable, very tangible demons and wizards of racism in America. Now, the most interesting thing about this novel, even if you ask me, is its form. It's a form, actually, uh, uh, the shape it takes, that I've seen lots of times in contemporary fiction. I keep I keep finding it. It's there, for instance, in A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan, uh, Who Not Diaz is Drown, which are both awesome books, which is the short story collection that actually forms some kind of longer narrative when you put each story after the other and forms some kind of novel. At the same time, Lovecraft Country is the most balanced example of this middle ground I have uh, encountered so far. If you take, for instance, Drown by Diaz, that is way more a short story collection than it is an actual novel. If you take Visit from the Goon Squad, that's actually a novel, and each chapter is kind of a self-enclosed short story, but they don't really stand on their own too much. Here, the balance is actually perfect, I think. Each of these short stories is an actual short story. You could, short story, you could definitely read it by itself, and together they contribute toward this longer narrative by adding a tiny detail each time, which contributes toward the novel and narrative in the book, and by exploring the inner life and the inner feelings of each member of this family at the time. I thought that was especially brilliant considering this is a homage and a take on Lovecraft who was first and foremost almost exclusively a short story writer, that's why we remember him, and each story additionally takes on a specific side of Lovecraftian horror and each of them offers a like uh, some kind of remix 
on a common trope in this genre. So that, for instance, you get a story about the manor house where a evil genius wizard lives, a la Charles Dexter Ward, you get a story about the haunted house a la Dreams in the Witch House, you get the story about the uh, mysterious haunted book, uh, Necronomicon uh, kind of book, you get a story about exploring the cosmos, such as, uh, of course, Shadow Out of Time, uh, Hudson's um, uh, House on the Borderlands, so on and so forth. And each of these stories plays beautifully with the key concept of the book, which is, of course, that these main characters are African-Americans and live in a hostile world where everything they do might actually cause them harm, even terrible, terrible harm, even death not just meddling with obscure forces, even just driving in the wrong side of town. I'm not gonna add anything on that front because I'd spoil you the book, but the last story in the collection and the, let's say, the epilogue play on that idea, on the idea that America do these people is a cursed land. Anyway, even without the Lovecraftian horror, in a way that is very beautiful and is kind of heartbreaking. The, the book is exhilarating, it's very thrilling, the end of it, is quite quite depressing when you think about it. Oh and by the way since I mentioned that half short story collection half novel kind of book I do believe that that kind of form might be influenced by the dynamics of TV series and I do believe that Lovecraft Country is ripe for a TV series adaptation. This thing is basically already ready to be put on the screen. It's perfect. It will come out an awesome uh, TV series in my opinion. Kind of an American version of Penny Dreadful more American, with better monsters, fast cars, uh, worse racism. Excellent book. Is it perfect? Some stories flow way better than others, in my opinion, but that's also because there's uh, they are very diverse. Some of these stories are very thrilling and fast-paced, some are proper horror, um, straight scary, some are just hilariously fun. There's lots of variety in here and that's always good. The most brilliant thing about the book, of course, is the way it is 100%, 200% Lovecraftian without being racist or intolerant in any way. That's not the core of Lovecraftian horror at all, but actually by being the very opposite, by, being, by exposing the horrors and the true uh, dread of, ninth, of racism in 1950s America, maybe in the America and Western world, of today too. I'd say it is largely and mostly a work for Lovecraft fans because other people probably won't appreciate the nuances and the references and the pastiche in this book so much, but if you are a Lovecraft fan, do read it. It's a must read, truly. Thank you so much for watching, guys. What do you think about Lovecraft Country? Uh, have you read any other of Matt Ruff's novels? Is there any other of his works I should check out? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.